over garage flooring and floor coverings and the options that are out there and how I chose the flooring that I have in the different areas of my garages and also uh, another option that you might have for a porch covering as well and I'll show you that in a little while but uh, today we're going to go over the basically three different areas of garage flooring that I have why I have on the floor what's there and also in this particular garage here I'm going to go over the maintenance of this flooring and how easy it is to actually uh, take care of it or not have to take care of it so sit back and uh, we'll go through all the different different options and why we're here today all right so we're over here in my detached garage and it's got the basic concrete flooring uh, there's no coatings on it. There's there's a uh, a sealer coat that was put on it when it was poured and I'm going to say roughly 35 years ago uh, But some of the benefits to a basic concrete floor are that they're easy to sweep up. They're easy to, to maintain uh, one of the downsides to it is is It allows you to see dirt that's on the floor all the time. So I keep the side-by-side -side over here and I keep different uh, tools on the wall, the gardening tools, things like that. So what I, what I like about this garage uh, being detached is I'm not dragging the mud into the house. I'm not uh, worried about the mess that it would create in the, in the house garage. Uh, and, and I guess I want to start off also by saying that I know not everybody has the option to pick or choose which flooring they want for a garage because a lot of people might have a two stall garage or whatever and they keep their cars in that and and that's understandable but over the the past 30 years that I've lived here I've been fortunate enough to be able to add on this garage this detached garage and it's where I keep most of my my heavier equipment and uh, things like that that I use out in the mud every day so back to the the basic concrete flooring when we poured this we put a nice smooth finish on the floor and as you can see on the floor there's a little bit of a, a sheen or a shine to it and what that does is, is that after they pour the floor they uh, trowel it off and then they, they put a uh, spray sealer over top of it and I haven't done anything more to this floor since the day that uh, we finished the flooring so as you can see here on the floor there's, there's mud on it and that's basically where I had the side by side parked and after I go out and ride that in the woods, uh, playing on the trails or whatever, clean it up, bring it off. Sometimes you have dirt that falls off of it. And when you pull that machine back out, it's pretty visible. So you just grab a broom and sweep it up. With having this really nice, uh, smooth floor, it gets very slippery. And I know in the winter time or, or when the, the, we have extreme temperature changes, uh, it condensates on the floor. And yeah, I understand that's a, a, another issue, but when you go from really, really cold outside to a warm, humid day, this floor condensates. And when you walk in on this floor, you better be paying attention because it gets slippery. And I'm sure others out there that have very smooth, shiny concrete flooring, that whether it's condensation or whether it's moisture or water on the floor, it's slippery and you do have to be careful. So that's one of the cons to this type of floor. Uh, yeah, some people have a, a, a real light broom finish on it and that's fine as well, but then it's harder to sweep up. So if you're planning your different flooring materials or you're gonna pour a garage floor, just think about the different things that you're gonna have to deal with over the lifespan of, of living out of that garage or working out of that garage. And that's kind of the, the different options that we're gonna go over today is what flooring and why, and why I personally have the different flooring in the different areas of the garages and what I like and what I dislike about it. So sit back and uh, let's go over and show you some of the other flooring options and, and why we have them and, and how I maintain them. And All right, so the second flooring I wanted to talk about is over here in my workshop. And we've seen, or I've done several videos in the workshop here, and I've had several comments about the flooring that's in here. Uh, one, how do you keep it clean? Two, uh, how long has it lasted and all that. 
Well, I actually built this workshop or this, the, it's, a, it's a bay and a half wide, about 18 feet wide. And I built this back in 1997, so it's coming up on 25 years now. And it is the same original flooring. If you come down here, what it is, it's a, it's a one foot by one foot tile. And I chose the black and white checker. And it is glued or epoxy to the floor. You take your trowel with the uh, notched teeth and you put the uh, uh, adhesive on the floor and then you just pick these one by one squares and place them in the, the right positions. But uh, one thing about this floor that I like the, the best is its uh, durability. I'll come in here and like I said in some other videos, I can move all the stuff out that's on wheels and sweep this and literally bring the garden hose in and scrub this floor. And what I'll do is, is I'll take a wide broom, wet the floor down, take a wide broom with some kind of cleaner or degreaser and just basically broom scrub the floor and then go back through and rinse it down. I can rinse it down the drain or I can rinse it out the garage door to uh, keep it clean. And then I'll go back in and I'll put a, uh, a clear uh, sealer over top of it, a wax, if you will. They make a floor wax for these floors. Uh, if this flooring looks familiar, it would be similar to what you would see in, in a school or a shopping mall or something like that. And it is, it's an eighth inch thick floor tile and like I said, it's, it's like a hard, real super hard vinyl. And it is held up better than any flooring I've ever actually had over the, the time frame that I've been here. So for my workshop, it is a perfect flooring for me. Uh, weld spatter doesn't stick to it. Greases and oils wipe right off of it. So it's generally a very easy to maintain flooring. Now, what I put this in, a garage floor where I'm parking vehicles on. No, because one thing that, that you do notice with this, and more so on the white tile or any light colored tile, is if you pull a vehicle in on it, uh, it will leave black tread marks on it that, that kind of stain into the, the tile. Obviously, you wouldn't see it in the black as bad, but you do see it in the, the white. Now, I know I've seen some uh, showroom floors, sh uh, car showroom, motorcycle showroom, where they have these different tiles. And when they pull one of the vehicles away or a tractor or something like that, you actually see the staining of the tire that was there. So most places when they do something like this, they have another tile or they have a rug or they have a mat or something that they park a vehicle on because they've already experienced the hard way as I did that the vehicle tire stains the white or a light colored flooring tile and it's almost impossible to get it out. And this floor hasn't been cleaned or scrubbed or the, the workshop hasn't been emptied out for pretty close to a year, a year and a half now. So it's coming up on the time. I like to do it in the summer when I can, on a nice day when I can wheel the, the toolboxes and stuff out. And like I said, I'll come in here and hose this all down and scrub it. So right now you can see things staining that's on the floor. Um, different areas. It's it's dirty. It's lost its shine. And what I'll do is go through and and like I said, wheel everything out, clean it all up, and then put a uh, a clear wax floor coating on it, uh, just as they would in in schools, uh, car dealerships, things like that. So this floor is ready to be cleaned, and we're not going to go over this one today. We're going to go over the one in the. Uh, the side that I keep the vehicles in, the daily driving vehicles, and I'm going to show you what I do there and how easy it is and why I like it. But uh, again, when you're picking a flooring for a certain area, I guess you want to really think about what it is you're going to be doing in that area. If it's your house garage and it's the only garage space you have, then maybe a concrete floor is the best floor for you. In my example, I wanted something that performed really well, held up really well, but also looked neat. So when, when people walked in, they're like, wow, that's kind of a cool looking floor. And uh, so when you're picking a flooring, choose it based on how you see you're going to be using that flooring. Is it just for parking a vehicle in? Then there's another option. If it's uh, an area that you're going to be doing woodworking in, if it's an area you're going to be doing uh, welding and fabrication in, 
there's different reasons why you would or would not choose a specific flooring. And we're going to talk about epoxy coated floorings. And I've had that in my uh, original garage where I park my vehicles. And I'll tell you the biggest reason why I don't like the epoxy. So we'll, we'll, I'll try to put a couple pictures of that in from years back when I had the epoxy flooring down and why I don't like the epoxy and why I would stay away from it. Even if you want that really fine finished off look of the epoxy floor, you really have to think about the longevity of that flooring and the maintenance that's gonna be needed over the years for that particular flooring. And I've found over the years, we've actually done a, a white epoxy floor in our manufacturing area in our shop when we had that. And it worked out well. It looked very, very professional. Was a maintenance nightmare to always keep it clean, but it looked good. Uh, one of the main downsides to it is, is when it got wet, it was extremely slippery. We did not have the, uh, the paint chip or the paint flake or any kind of sanding abrasive put in that flooring. So that made it really uh, easy to keep clean and sweep up. And we had the, the drive on floor scrubbers and, and whatnot to maintain that. But it, it scratches easy. It uh, shows scratches very easy. So as far as an epoxy floor, I kind of like to stay away from the epoxy. And, uh, and I'll show you an example of uh, the floor I did here. It was a professional grade. It was done by myself and a couple guys that professionally put it down. So it, it wasn't a prep. It wasn't anything other than sometimes you just have a bad epoxy floor. And any of you guys out there that have had flooring, uh, the epoxy coated flooring for more than four or five years, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Especially if you're pulling vehicles in and on it, you'll get the, the tracks from the vehicles or the tires. Uh, one of my biggest issues I had with it was when you bring a vehicle in on that epoxy floor and it's got a hot tire from being driven out on the road. It has a tendency to adhere to the epoxy or it sticks. The, the hot rubber does something to the composition of the epoxy floor. And I literally one day pulled my truck out and as I pulled it out, I hear this, this tearing, cracking sound. And I got out of my truck and I looked back and it had literally lifted a section of flooring, maybe six by eight inches wide that where the, the vehicle was sitting literally peeled that up and was still stuck to my tire. And that was with the proper preparation and everything else. It just did not adhere or did not uh, bode well for the hot tires. So that's something else that you guys have to, to watch for with the epoxy flooring. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a couple pictures into the video of the epoxy floor that I had done actually in both sides of the garage where I keep vehicles and uh, show you how pretty the epoxy looked but it also flaked and it lifted and it, it just looked horrible. And that was after about two years. So when you're thinking about an epoxy floor, think about the longevity and the maintenance of it because it's going to lift, it's going to chip, it's going to flake, it's going to scratch. Uh, it's also very slippery when it's wet. So I came across a flooring and it's called Swiss Tracks. And it's a, a tile type of flooring. And uh, let's take a walk into the other garage and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, we're in the two car garage that I uh, originally built on with the house. And this particular floor here, I did the epoxy flooring. It was a white epoxy floor with a gray paint chip flake in it. And uh, I had it down for probably four years until I started really noticing some uh, wear with it. I actually put some uh, tile mats down, if you will, so when I drove the vehicle in on it, that the tires wouldn't stain the white flooring. Why did I pick white? Because it just made it look so nice and it was bright and everything else in here, but it was an absolute bear to maintain. After about the three to four year mark, it just started looking horrible. It was it didn't look anything like the day you put it in. Then you got to decide, okay, do I want to strip it? Do I want to recoat it? 
So I just didn't want that maintenance nightmare and hassle after every three to four years of stripping the floor, re-epoxying re it, and going through and doing all that. So through the different uh, searches I did, I found these, which are called Swiss tracks, and they make different flooring. There's Swiss tracks out there. There's another company, it's called Race Deck. Uh, why I ended up ultimately choosing the Swiss track flooring was for a handful of reasons. And one, this Swiss track flooring here is three quarters of an inch thick. And I looked at some of the race deck flooring that was out there and it was about a half inch thick. Uh, the thickness does make a difference when you're bringing vehicles in and you have contours in your flooring. There's when you have floor drains and things like that. Um, so the, the thickness of it is just another reason for the longevity of it and what makes it last longer. And if you, if you look around here, you can see that uh, I've got multi-colors in it. And these were colors that I preferred or enjoyed. Um, it's what I painted the garage to look like and then tried to get flooring to match. And with this Swiss Tracks flooring, it, uh, they, they've got just so many colors available that you can pick from. No, this isn't a sponsored video. This is just a video on floorings and, and why I choose what I chose. I've got a couple samples or examples of this Swiss track flooring. And these were from the porch that I, or flooring that I did on my porch. And then we'll actually go out there and show you that and why I changed what I had out there. But these are about three quarters of an inch thick here. And what they call these is the Swiss tracks ribbed tracks. And how they come up with that is, I don't know if you can see the ribbing in this flooring, but it's basically a round radius over the top. And it's also the flow through design. And what the flow through means is, is when you pull a vehicle on here or whatever, anything that you bring in is wet, it will literally drip down through the flooring and uh, there is nothing wet on the top surface of the floor. I can bring a vehicle in here, or I can go in and rinse this floor off, and within a matter of five or 10 minutes, I can walk across this floor in my socks because it stays dry, and I didn't have to squeegee it, I didn't have to, to do anything else. It just flows down through, and if you look at on the bottom of these, the flow through design, and I don't know if I hold that up, you can literally see through that, and what happens is the water comes down through it and then it's got these channels or these ribs in it that allow the water to work its way to a floor drain or out the door or wherever your water would go to when, uh, when something's wet on it. Or if uh, for some reason you don't have floor drains in your garage um, or it doesn't slope out the garage doors, one nice thing is about this flow through design is is it'll let the water sit on the floor underneath this floor covering and uh, you don't have those wet puddles in your garage that you have to walk through or, or track back into the house. So with these tiles, when you buy them, they're 15 and 3 quarters by 15 and 3 quarters. Don't ask me why they come up with that size, I have no idea. Um, but it's got a, a female tab end on it on two sides and it's got a male tab on it on two sides and that's how you lock these things together so if I've got two sets of flooring here and I want to lock them together I take and insert the male tab into the female tab and just tap it down you can do a garage floor this garage is uh, 24 by 30 you could do this in half a day. And when you take and you snap these together, so when you add your next set in, let's do this side. Snap that together. And now you've got um, the start of a floor. And you generally start in one corner of the garage, the front or the back, and it's easiest to start with the um, male side to the wall first and work your way across. It actually goes very quick and then when you get to the, the end side of your garage, you can do your cuts. And anywhere that you have to cut these, 
like this one here is a, a sample or a piece that I had to cut. I cut this with a jigsaw up through here and across. You can cut it with a jigsaw, a table scraw, table saw, a skill saw, just about anything. No, you couldn't do it with a pocket knife or anything like that. You, it does make it easiest to have a power tool to cut these. They also make a shear that you can rent to cut the tiles if you don't want to deal with a saw. Uh, but there's a lot of options to do these and it's actually very simple to do. And one thing you might notice the difference, this is called the, the ribbed track flow through design and this is the rib tracked smooth design. This came out a couple years after I did this garage floor, or if they were available at the time, I probably would have done the smooth flooring rather than the rib track in the garage, just because when I walk out here and my socks are bare feet, the smooth top on this is, is easier uh, to walk on. But the other thing is, is with it being flat on the top, it will hold water a little bit better than this flooring will, the, the rib track. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how I clean this garage floor. I basically take a leaf blower and blow off any of the leaves, the dust, the debris, the grass, whatever might come into the garage. And then uh, this particular floor, the underside of it hasn't been scrubbed for two, two and a half years now, where we actually pull this out, slide it out, sweep up the floor and uh, hose it down. Keep in mind, we live in a northern climate where we have road salt, snow, slush, debris, the uh, road cinders that they put on the road, everything that gets caught up on your car gets deposited in on this floor. And there's a couple ways to deal with that or manage it is you can let the stuff dry on the floor and take a shot vac and sweep up the, the, the high areas. Or you can just basically hit it with your uh, garden hose and wash down through it and then go back later, pull the tiles out to clean it up. So we're gonna go over that as well today, but I wanted to show you the other thing that I actually use these smooth Swiss track floors for out on my porch where we had some indoor outdoor carpet that every five or six years had to be replaced because the sun the weather and everything just completely destroyed it. So let's take a walk out onto the porch and I'll show you where we use that at. Now we're out here on the porch and I wanted to show you this real quick. This is the uh, the smooth top I was talking about. And what makes it nice out here is we're out here in our bare feet a lot. And uh, over the years, this particular area here we where we have this table, we'll come out and we'll eat. And like I said, we're in our bare feet a lot. So this is just a lot more comfortable on your feet. And they also make these, you can put them around your pool, you can put them around a hot tub, anything like that. And again, the nice thing about it is, is when the rainwater hits this, it flows through and uh, doesn't leave it wet all the time. So this area in here where we had the table is pressure treated lumber underneath that. And we had a uh, indoor outdoor carpet on it and after the years, the sun that beats down on it would just basically dry rot out the carpet and had to be replaced every, like I said, five years. So I got to thinking, well, geez, let's try this uh, flooring out here on the porch. And it's been, I'll bet, four or five years now, maybe longer, that we've had this down. And the color hasn't changed. It hasn't, uh, doesn't have any rot or any brittleness to it or anything like that. And one thing neat about this flooring is where you have a transition spot, they have a separate piece or a ramp piece that snaps in on its own. Basically, it just snaps in as if it was another piece of tile, but it creates that transition from the rib track floor down to whatever the uh, remaining floor is. So for, for out here on this porch, it's made it fabulous to keep it clean. I can use the leaf blower out here as well for grass and pollen and what whatever might blow up on the floor or leaves. And just blow that off and it stays clean. Generally, you don't have to mop it or anything like that. And the other benefit is, is if we have picnics and food spills, 
the oils and whatnot that come off of the foods don't get stuck or trapped into the decking anymore it will land on this flooring and can be wiped right off so there's benefits to it with uh, with keeping it clean and maintaining and this literally in the winter time it, there's three or four inches of snow on it and I just take a plastic shovel to shovel it off uh, keep in mind if you're going to do that do not use a plastic shovel that has the metal edge on it you will scratch everything on here if you do that so you want to find a plastic shovel with the plastic bottom so it doesn't scratch up the floor but anyhow it's held up through a lot of years of of winters of snow rain things like that and works out really well and you can see down here basically where I had a a pole I had to go in here and I just took and I notched the corner of it out where it comes into the pole and I had to bend and flex it to bring it back around and snap it together and you cannot see that seam right here where I cut that out just to bring it around that pole so you could do this on a porch with uh, railings and and posts and things very easily all right I want to show you guys real quick uh, how easy it is to get an individual tile out if you would need to let's say you damaged one and I know I have a spot over on the other side of the floor where I learned the hard way uh, I literally will use floor jacks on this floor I'll use jack stands creepers things like that everything about it works fine don't have any problems on the floors but one thing that I found out is on any of the floor jacks that I have the bottom four legs of the floor jacks I went in and I welded a let's say a one inch by one inch square little pad on the bottom of them the cheaper floor jacks generally are like a piece of angle iron that come come down and when you put the weight of that vehicle on that floor jack it can and it will push through or distort the flooring so you don't want to do that you want to use a floor jack that has a, a pad under the four legs of it uh, you could even put a board or a sheet of plywood under each floor jack if uh, you didn't have the ability to weld feed onto your your floor jacks or your jack stands I mean and uh, so that's about the only thing with this flooring that I found that you've got to be careful of other than that I can bring in my uh, my one ton my three ton or any of my floor jacks and get it under the vehicle and it doesn't destroy this flooring or doesn't cause any problems and that's the other benefit to the three-quarter inch flooring but let's go ahead and pull a section of this out real quick and show you how easy it is if you needed to replace it and I also wanted to show you the spot on the epoxy that it lifted on me I got this one tile up and you can see right here is where the epoxy was and this epoxy floor for a year or excuse me for two years was as hard as it can be the floor was prepped there was never a vehicle driven on this floor or anything used on this floor prior to putting the epoxy because when I built the garage it was about two months that we left the garage empty knowing that I didn't want any contaminants in the floor to mess up the epoxy but what happened was the first time that I parked the truck right here that hot tire lifted that epoxy and you can see that this epoxy has been delaminating ever since then and it's become brittle and yes this was an industrial grade epoxy it wasn't the Home Depot brand it wasn't a big box store brand anything like that it was a good expensive epoxy and uh, has just basically gone to crap over the years so that's why I decided that no more no more epoxy floors for me they just became such a maintenance nightmare you saw me take the tile out and you're probably wondering well geez I bet those are hard to put back in well I'm gonna go through real quick and just show you that I've got this piece lifted up I'm going to snap this one back in but I've got to pull this one up because of the the male female pattern of how these go so snap that in and I've got to get this one down and under and just like that it's all back together 
and you saw the dirt that was underneath it and you don't see any of it right now that to me is a big advantage yes I know in my mind it's dirty underneath but all the guests and anybody that come to this garage don't see any of that dirt so it makes it kind of nice so let's move on to getting the garage floor cleaned out over on the other side something else I wanted to show you is I do have my sandblast cabinet over in this side of the garage along with the air compressor but what I want to show you is how this flooring works or what makes it nice about it is, is I have spilled some sand down into there and when I said earlier when you have small little spills like this or if you've got dirt or debris in there you can actually just take a vacuum cleaner and uh, vacuum it up and I'll show you real quick Just like the the water and stuff fall through you can actually take and vacuum back up are you looking at my butt I mean maybe they're nice shorts well they're the the new Lee cargo pants I got through the extreme motion and man I'll tell you what with this uh, little phone pocket here it makes it nice when you're bending over and working all day you don't have to worry about your phone stabbing you in the, the gut or the back side and the other thing i actually really like is with the pockets on these the material's nice and thin so everybody that carries pocket knives it clips on real easy pretty nice now we gotta get to work quit looking at my butt give me a hand all right you can see the amount of dirt that is on the floor here that's underneath that section that we just pulled out and the funny thing about it is if you left that much dirt on your garage floor you would be cleaning it up all the time and just drive you crazy but as you can see I can guarantee you that under this floor looks exactly like that but you don't know and like I said this is about two and a half years of not being removed not being cleaned or picked up just to general blow it out with the uh, leaf blower once in a while maybe sweep off some uh, grass clumps or whatever but we're going to keep pulling the rest of this out and get this swept up and i'll show you what the uh, original epoxy floor looked like dirt that's in here that like I said before you don't see this dirt it doesn't show when you're using these flooring tiles all right so here's another quick benefit of this floor um, looks like there's some potting soil there I wonder have any I, idea. I mean that might be where I dropped a plant <laughs> but you know the, the the nicest thing about this flooring is is you can have this kind of mess under it and no one knows it's there. cleaned out scrubbed it with a big wide broom and really that's all I was looking to do is get most of the the dirt and the mud up but the reality of it is is the epoxy floor before I uh, put that Swiss tracks down or started using it like I said again 
if you have an epoxy floor in your garage at some point in time, you will run into the dreaded uh, hot tire peeling and chipping away. Like these sections here, you know, the, the, for the first three or four or five years, these things were stuck down pretty good. And over time, they just start losing their uh, adhesiveness. The reality of it is, is this flooring, even where it's stuck over the years, looks terrible. It has yellowed out. This floor, when I put it down, was a pure white. I guess back to uh, epoxy versus a tile floor versus regular concrete. I wanted a garage just to look a little bit better than a regular concrete floor. The other thing with concrete floors is if you don't keep up with them as well, they will start to do what's called a spalling. And that is where the top layer of the concrete starts to break down and then it's a constant battle with dust issues and you'll have little groove marks in that floor where that concrete has just slowly deteriorated over time. All the prep that goes with them, the, uh, the, the, the stripping the concrete, the acid washing, the glass bead or the shot put um, sandblasting of the floors, and yes, I've done it all, and still to have epoxy peel up, strip away, not to mention what it looks like on the everyday tire marks that comes in and out of them. Uh, I would have to say that I'm much happier with the Swiss tracks flooring and the ability to pull them out, clean it, the ability to replace a bad tile should you ever get one. So as you can see, we've got it all pulled back in and everything looks as it did before. And the reality of it is, is you really didn't even know it was dirty under there. And when you're looking at it now, it looks the same as before we pulled it out. But uh, I knew there was dirt under it and I knew that uh, after every couple of years, it's good to get that cleaned out of there and uh, get it swept up. So I've got the crew here waiting for me and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, just wanted to, again, touch on, you know, this flooring isn't for everybody. Like I said, I wouldn't do um, welding in here. I wouldn't do carpentry work in here, but this is the garage that I pull all the vehicles in to put on jacks, jack stands, and change tires and do everything like that. So I know there's videos out there of these particular floors and this flooring and what all they do on it. And really, it's, it's some of the more durable stuff that uh, there is out there in the market. So. All right, I think that's gonna be a wrap on the uh, different garage flooring options that are out there. And I wanted to go over all those options that I have here and the, the years that I've dealt with the different scenarios and issues with it. And I'd also like to thank the Lee Jean Company for supplying me with some shorts and these extreme motion shorts that I've got on today are a very very nice pair of shorts and uh, some of the other ones that I got are very nice so if you get a chance check out the uh, the Lee brand cargo shorts for all us old guys that are still into the cargo shorts and really enjoy those I enjoy the pockets I enjoy the the cell phone pocket this thing's got in it the lightweight durability so again you know we discussed the different flooring and all that so if you like the video drop a comment give us a thumbs up and always subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.